Welcome back. You're watching News Center. India looks great as a market and as an R&D hub, but not so much for semiconductor fab, at least not yet. That's the message coming in from German semiconductor major Infineon CEO, Johan Hanabak. Speaking to CNBC TV 18, Hanabak maintained confidence in India as a market exceeding $1 billion in revenue. He also stressed on doubling Infineon's R&D footprint in the country. He was also critical of protectionism, noting that globalized nature of semiconductor value chains will ensure that no single country can become wholly self-sufficient. Uh, the ecosystem in semiconductors is very, very um, complex and at the same time a crucial element. And uh, while I understand on the one hand that uh, factories uh, draw the headlines, uh, but uh, we really in, in, in building up the Indian uh, semiconductor ecosystem, we need to think about from materials, semiconductor material know-how. We need to think about uh, a chip design where uh, uh, India is already excellently uh, positioned. We need to think about software. We also think about um, manufacturing. Uh, but what also needs to come is the customer pool. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with the Indian uh, customer base in, in order to detect what is, uh, are their requirements. Where can we uh, create value with our innovation? Mm -hmm. And only if all of that comes together, uh, I think uh, the Indian semiconductor ecosystem will eventually uh, strive, but it's very impressive to see what has been achieved in such a short uh, period of time. India is quite strong on the application level. So India is good in terms of developing applications, basis the foundational technology. But are you seeing the interest, especially from the private sector, especially from the government, when it comes to uh, building the foundational technology? I think that is a core focus area. Are you seeing that interest? Are you seeing that conversations in your partners here uh, for investing further in foundational technologies, uh, which are underlying technologies for AI? Yeah, absolutely. As Infineon, uh, we say we power AI, we enable AI, and we use AI. On the later, I mentioned already, we use AI, for example, in software development, but also in, in, in chip design. Um, in terms of we power AI, we are the um, uh, leading provider of power solutions for this uh, data center, which power ultimately the AI processors, which are getting uh, more and more power hungry, as we all know. Um, so that is for us a, a, um, a very important area, um, where, which is, by the way, at this moment in time, also uh, growing strongly. Now, we also know the challenges of cloud computing, right? It's mm. huge data center consuming a lot of power. In that regard, we are also offering uh, what we call edge AI. So um, solutions based on a microcontroller uh, with AI accelerator, with um, uh, uh, flows to help customers um, establish their uh, smaller AI model uh, to run at the edge, which is obviously much more efficient, uh, secure, lower latency. My two final questions, uh, you, you're giving us a global perspective as to how things are positioned coming here to India. Uh, tell us, uh, the semiconductor race, the AI race, how does India stack up as compared to some of the other geographies in which you operate uh, in terms of where we currently stand and what the potential is uh, to grow from here? Yeah, you have a critical position already uh, today if uh, things, uh, if you talk about software or, or, or chip design. And I understand the ambition of also of the government and India in general uh, to broaden that. Uh, and I think that that makes sense uh, to, first of all, strengthen your strength. That is uh, always critical in semiconductors because um, uh, competition is on the heels and things are moving very fast. But now to build on that uh, in terms of adjacent recent uh, capabilities uh, makes a lot of sense. It also takes a while to develop such a complex uh, uh, industry that should not be forgotten, but I think India is on a good path. And my final question to you, uh, this conversation that we're having uh, comes at a very interesting time uh, where we're beginning to see conversations around sovereign tech. Uh, conversations built around protectionism. We're beginning to see that increasingly. Uh, we're, we see daily headlines with respect to potential tariffs. Uh, we're seeing daily headlines about building national level technologies mm -hmm. uh, so as to have that uh, 
the word that we use here in India is called Atma Nirbharta, which is to have self-sufficiency mm -hmm. uh, in a technology. Is that detrimental when you look at uh, an ecosystem like that of Semicon or AI, which operates across geographies, across stakeholders, which has very large GVCs? Mm -hmm. Does that hurt you? Does that make your job harder? Well, look, uh, the semiconductor industry uh, as such is a poster child of globalization, right? Uh, all the companies, all the successful companies focused uh, on, on one or two or three things they did uh, 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 better than nobody else in the, in, in, in the world. And now with the um, um, de uh, deglobalization or call it de-risking or the desire for self-sufficiency, which in my mind nobody will achieve, not even the, the biggest players will achieve self-sufficiency because of the complexity of the semiconductor industry. But nevertheless, this um, uh, uh, effect of uh, local or regional uh, solution um, is in a way decremental uh, because um, it, uh, it increases the cost. Mm. That's a matter of fact. And it might therefore even slow down the innovation speed, which uh, we all benefited from.